Hello, it's Thursday, May the 28th, and we are following along with the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Colossians as he is endeavoring to build their faith and strengthen their commitment to God to prepare them for all of the great trials they're going to face by focusing their faith on who Jesus Christ is. You know, Isaiah, the prophet, wrote, uh, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. That is true even today. And so as believers, the more we think, contemplate, meditate on, and worship God for who he is, both God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, it transforms our perspective and it... Um, strengthens our own sense of resolve and purpose so that we can respond correctly to the things that develop in life that can be so disheartening. So Paul has just told the Colossians that Jesus Christ is the image of the very firstborn, the image the image of God himself, and the firstborn over all creation, and everything was made by him and for him. And he continues that thought in verse 18 of chapter 1 of Colossians. He is the head of the body, the church. Now, by the body, he means the body of Christ, which we all know that imagery and we know that metaphor, but we often forget the, um, the way that uh, applies to our everyday decisions, that we are, as a b group of believers around the world, we should be in concert with one another about who we love, what our purpose is, and our appreciation one for another. We, we, sh we should not be having the hostility and the disregard and the disrespect we have one for another. Now, we often might when somebody lets us down, uh, believers who drift off in some kind of variant theology or bad behavior, you know, that might be natural, but the spiritual body should be different. I, my physical body, as I age, I continue to lose more and more of my youthful capacities. And one of them is holding on to my hair. And there are times when I look at my head and I just think, oh, why did I have to lose my hair? When for so many years I thought, well, I'm never going to go bald. My hair was so thick. But it, it's counterproductive for me to, to resent my body. That serves no good purpose. So we, as Christians, can't resent or disrespect or disregard other parts of the body because it has a head. And the head is our real identity. It's Jesus Christ. So that means the arm and the finger and the toe and the knee that you don't like in the body of Christ, that's part of Jesus you're not liking. So although we don't necessarily agree theologically with certain aspects, I think we must have a love and appreciation and a deep respect for one another. Because he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. He's the first one to rise from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence in everything in life, everything in history, everything in the world, and certainly everything in our theology and what we believe and what we preach and what we teach and what we practice. The preeminence is Jesus. It's not us. It's not us and our happiness, us and our welfare, us and our empowerment, us and our um, uh, claiming faith. The preeminence must always be the Lord Jesus, and that's not accomplished by just saying, well, to him be the glory, or in Jesus' name. That's not having letting Jesus have the preeminence. It means that genuinely in our hearts, our utmost priority should be to please him, and it should really truly be for his glory. And that's where spirituality hits the carnality of the human nature, and that's where that struggle is that Paul's talking about in Romans 7. So he says that he might have the preeminence for it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. That's one of those verses that we use to um, assert, claim, and even prove that Jesus Christ is God, that in him all the fullness of the Godhead dwelt bodily, in him all the fullness of the Father, the Father chose this. That tells you Jesus is God, but it also tells you something else. The in him is telling you, it's not you. It's not me. You and I are not gifted with the ability to become little gods or God himself. God is not surrendering his authority to us. It is in Jesus all the fullness of the Godhead dwelt bodily. So the Spirit of God, who is the Spirit of Christ, the Bible tells us, lives in us, and we can become godly and godlike only in our 
persona and our virtue and our divin and our um, uh, divine attributes in terms of reflecting those. But we can never be God. There's only one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's in Jesus the fullness of the Godhead dwelt bodily. Now, in a offshoot of that thought, if you're Aaron dwelt by the Holy Spirit, the full God dwells inside you, but that's not your identity. That was Christ's identity. For us, it's our empowerment. It's our very life. But we remain human, and we are limited, but our God is not. So in everything you do this day and this week, and hopefully for all of our lives, may we always do things knowing that in all things He must have the preeminence in our thoughts, our desires, our dreams, our visions, our aspirations, our deeds, and our words, that He is the one who's glorified. Let's pray. Father, once again, we are humbled by these uh, glorious words of Jesus Christ and who He is and what He is like and His authority and His power and His essence. And oftentimes we, sometimes not even knowing it, we try to supplant that and we try to put ourselves on the throne and we, we like to act as if all authority has been given to us and all the fullness of God dwells in us. Father, help us to keep a humble heart to know that we are simply temples of the Holy Spirit. That He remains distinct from us, but He indwells us and bears fruit in us and gifts us that we might reflect the person of Jesus Christ to the world. May you help us live like that today and to glorify you in all we do. For we ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, tomorrow will be Friday, and we'll only then be about nine days away from our first service together on June 7th. I hope you're making your plans to be with us. And if you'd like to come a little early to the soft opening, that'll be Wednesday night, June 3rd. We're going to open up the doors, let people come who want to be here for the Wednesday night service. The praise team will be here, and they'll be singing the same songs they'll be singing on Sunday just so they get a good feel. So we have a fantastic service on Sunday. But the message will be different, and I hope you'll join us on that Wednesday night as well. But if you can't, do everything you can to be in church on June 7th. Have a great day.